Steph is telling us we're too fast. Good evening, Good evening. everyone. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Global 365 Prayer Network Tuesday. Prayer coming to you live from the beautiful Prayer Pavilion of Light here on the campus of Dream City Church of Phoenix Prayer Mountain. I want to welcome all of you who are watching all over the world. God bless each and every one of you. We are on a new system starting tonight, live streaming. Mm -hmm. yes. So, yes, I hope everybody at home could be clapping also. That means you, you can see it and it's working. So uh, please bear with us if it's not, but we are, we have the upgraded system and every week from now on, we're gonna upgrade some more and we're gonna get other cameras. We're just gonna uh, upgrade every week. So get ready for, we're on YouTube now. We're on YouTube as well. Yeah. So those of you that are, yeah. yes. <laughs> this right now is going to uh, our website, Facebook, and YouTube. So those of you that uh, want to go on YouTube on the Global 365 Prayer and like us, subscribe to it. That way you'll get all of our stuff from now on. And I may do different things from time to time, even in between uh, the prayer meeting. So I might too. She might too. We might even do something <laughs> together. Well, I'm so but, glad that. But before we we say anything else, I want to thank Dennis. Dennis left. Is Dennis oh, still did here? Oh, Dennis leave? No, oh, there she is. He's back there. Yes. Thank you for Dennis. Yes, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. He He's worked, worked hard on this. He's worked tires, tirelessly behind the scenes to get this ready. Yes. Hours and hours. Thank you. Thank you for Jeremy. Yes, Thank you Jeremy. for Stephanie, mm -hmm. all those who have helped. Yes. And, yes. And, so. and today uh, we want to thank Roxanne. Roxanne came in to do a special project yes. for us. So we got we got new things yeah. coming up. Things are happening, guys. <laughs> Before we start, I'm going to tell you about next week. Uh, next week we're going to have our Thanksgiving service here. But one thing that has changed since last week till this week is that the church, the big church, uh, canceled their Thanksgiving service. They, uh, they said that we are going to send everybody up here on Tuesday night. So next week, from when all you campuses. Come, from all campuses. Yeah. So next week, when you come, this place, so I'm telling you, so you come early to get a seat. We're going to have the doors open. We're going to have seats out there. We're going to have seats out there. Uh, well, we may even put some seats up there. I don't know. Whatever we can get <laughs> seats, we're going to get people in here. So come next week early, expecting it's going to be an exceptional night. Mm -hmm. We're going to have uh, some wonderful to things it. to share yeah. with you. We're going to have special music. Uh, also, we're getting new worshipers uh, yeah, all Hannah. the time. Good to have Hannah tonight. And we're going to have pool, pool band next week. Next week, we're going to have like double or triple that amount. So come expect great things, and uh, uh, I, I know I am. So come. Me too. You too? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm so glad that my wonderful wife is back. Yay. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We missed her. Uh, I miss you guys. I was tired of running solo because uh, it was getting really low. <laughs> so uh, no. And I didn't want to <laughs> go anymore. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad to be here. Father, we just thank you. Yes. For this season that we are in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. This is truly a season of blessing. Mm. To be grateful and Lord, we just give you glory, praise, and honor for what you have done, for what you're doing. And we know that the the best days of our lives, our families, mm -hmm. our businesses, our churches, our country yes. is ahead of us. Yes. Holy so we just ask you right now, Holy Spirit, to come. As we go before you in worship, prepare our hearts yes, to receive what you have for us tonight. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Heaven's spun creation, his pride and adoration, his treasures woven by his love. His careful hands they hold us safe within his promise of calling and of destiny.
It's been a couple of weeks since we heard from my wife, so I think I'm going to yield the floor to her. We want you to start. <laughs> right you, off the bat here. Right off the bat. <laughs> um, I want to share tonight on holding strong to our values. Psalms 12, it has a short eight verses, and it says this. Deliver, Lord. In other words, help, Lord. For the godly have disappeared, and people of integrity have vanished. People lie to one another. They flatter and deceive. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that boasts. They say, we speak persuasively we know how to flatter and boast who is our master because of the violence done to the oppressed because of the painful cries of the needy I will spring into action the Lord says I will provide the safety they so desperately desire yes the Lord's words are absolutely reliable. They are as untainted as silver purified in a furnace on the ground where it is thoroughly refined. You, Lord, will protect them. You will continually shelter each one from these evil people. For the wicked seem to be everywhere when people promote evil 
What an amazing sobs. And it's so for this day, isn't it? You know, the, the teachers teach a story. They tell a story about a man who found traces of leprosy on the walls of his home. And the walls were knocked down, presumably because of his sin. But his neighbor, who hasn't committed any sin, but shares a common wall with the sinner, ends up with a knocked down wall as well. From this, the teachers derive the adage, distance yourself from an evil neighbor. Beyond the practical advice of keeping away from bad people, the teachers also teach that we can't help being affected by those around us. As human beings, we are inevitably influenced by our surroundings, aren't we? But what happens when we live in a world, the one that David described in the Psalms I just read to you, when what is vile is honored by the human race? How do we stay righteous? in a world unashamed of sin? How can we uphold our values when we're surrounded by values so very different from our own? It's not easy, is it? It's not easy to do what's right when it isn't popular, when what is popular isn't what we believe to be right. Appropriately, the Psalms begins with help, Lord, and it ends with the prayer that God protect the innocent. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe, and you will protect us forever from the wicked, who freely strut about when what is vile is honored by the human race. We must pray for God's help to stand up against those vile things that are valued by others. It's not an easy task for us to do. And it's one for which we need a divine assistance. Yes. Almighty God, the Holy Spirit of the living God that lives within us. We can benefit from the principle that we are affected by our surroundings. We can choose to be around people who reinforce our beliefs and our values. We can read the Bible and other literature that provides strength and inspiration for us. We can become a part of a community. Think about it. This is God's community right here. And what an amazing thing that we can come together. We have the same God. We worship the same God. And we have values. We read our Bible. We know, we understand what God expects of us. And then we walk in it. Most importantly, we must be aware the most dangerous part of being influenced by society is that it happens unnoticeably. It creeps in through the TV, through the billboards, what is in our face at all times, and the people we meet in the street. It's important that we as Christians, we need to stop and take stock once in a while and ask ourselves what our society values. And then we need to question ourselves if these are the same values that we share. Knowing where we different from what is honored by the human race is half our, our battle, if you think about it. And the other half is that we 
have the values of God. One that is one with God's health and one with the community of God. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we can run to this mountain at any time. Father, you have provided a way from the day that this building came about that it opened 24-7. An $8 million building that is open 24-7 is unheard of. The protection that you have over this building. Yes, Lord. We know it's just a building, but Father, we know you reside here. Father, we know that this is Prayer Mountain mm. for the prayers of the saints. They have come from the nations. And Father, that you have given us such a place that we will never, ever take for granted. For it's you, almighty God, who has made these things possible. And we pray to the living God that you will gird us up, that we will be strengthened in you, Father. And we will remember to put on the armor of God, never to take it off. For you will always shield us and protect us yes, from the Lord. enemy, we pray. And we thank you. We thank you for who you are in our lives. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. So much. So much is happening. It's like a line has been drawn in the sand between right and wrong, left and right. Choose ye this day. Amen. What you gonna do? Yes. Who you gonna serve? What are you gonna believe in? Yeah. You know, every year around this time, I try to talk to our people about the season that we're entering, kind of give a little bit of forewarning of the time that we're in. But this year is an extra special one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, because between Thanksgiving and New Year's is a time where there is a, just a lot of emotions are in the air. A lot of things. There's a lot of memories going on, a lot of feelings. Especially now, with what we just, she just said, between the left and the right, right and the wrong, I don't know, it's just... Magnified. So much is magnified now. Yes. That Amen. We, it's like we go from here, like we go like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And especially this year is more magnified. So if I was going to give a title to what they talk about tonight, it's going to be, is this a season of blessing or not? Is it hope or despair? Faith or fear? Love or hate? Wow. Peace or turmoil? Mm. Joy or depression? Wow. Because all these feelings, at one time or another, we're going to feel during this time. Yeah. Trust me. God has given us all these emotions. There's nothing wrong with the emotions. And all these emotions, if you think about it, I learned this from Pastor Barnett. All these emotions are pre present at the same time in us. Yeah. We just happen to put, magnify a certain emotion and bring it up mm -hmm. and act upon it and ignore the rest. Just because we're happy doesn't mean sadness goes away. It's so there. True. So true. But we're happy at the time. Right. Depends on what we focus on. Where your attention goes, that's where the power goes. The power so what are we going to... Focus on. This year, I know next week when we talk about Thanksgiving, you'll see the Thanksgiving table and all the different things we, we'll discuss. You're going to be 
feeling a lot of these emotions, and a lot of the, stu the stuff that you're going to think about are not necessarily really good. You mm -hmm. think about Thanksgiving 79, that such and such cousin said what? Thanksgiving 98, <laughs> mom said that, this or that, or... Oh, well. At a certain time, maybe so a loved true. one went home, they're not there anymore, that was the first. Mm -hmm. So all these different emotions are going, and you tend to have a tendency that every time during this year, those things come back. You start thinking about the same things. So true, yeah. It's like a roller, it's like a wheel that's turning. But I wanna challenge you this year to break that pattern. That's good. So be aware of when all these emotions are in you, when one pops up and it's not good, push it down and bring the good one up. And pretty soon, you're gonna change. Proverbs 17, says, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A merry heart. That's what we need to have during this time. So, Father, we just ask you to come right now, Holy Spirit. Let us worship you once again and help us to remember now all the wonderful things that we have experienced in our lifetime during this season. That we would focus on the merry things, on the positive things. Mm -hmm. That we would make up our mind that this year, that's all we're going to concentrate on. And for that, Lord, we need the power of your Holy Spirit. Because in our own strength, we cannot do it. So come now as we worship you. Increase in this place. Increase.
in spirit and in truth. You know, we want to take this time now and, and pray for, for the needs that have come in. Also pray for the needs of our nation and around the world. Uh, these are a few that have come in today. Um, Sherry Kinsman, her brother, is not doing well. And uh, she's not able to go see him. So please remember, what is his name? Do we know his name? Alan. Please remember Alan. Also, I got a call from Bill and Sue Bryzak today. Um, their daughter, um, 50 years old, just passed away from aneurysm. They're faithful friends of ours, faithful wow. attendees of this church for many years. So let's remember them. Yeah. Um, Stephanie was her name. Car Carlotta needs a touch from the Lord. Joseph and Cecilia are not here. They're, they're not feeling well, so. We love you, Joseph and Cecilia. Yes. And that you get well tonight. For my mother-in-law, Margaret, that God would touch her. Yes. For Kim, for Zaley, Alexi, Brother Fred in New Zealand, his spine surgery. Jesus. Continue to pray for Pastor Luke that God would do uh, even greater miracles. Yes. Heal him completely for Bonnie, mm -hmm. Kelly, Lenora, radiation, yes. and Titus. That God would touch Titus and Pastor Arian. That God would do a miracle in him. And any other needs in this place? Mm -hmm. Just God knows what they are. And it really, if we're truthful, it's all of us. Because my pastor always said, if you don't have a need, pray for a need. Because when you have a need, you need to pray. And you need a miracle, you pray. So if you don't have a need, pray that God will give you a need. So those of you who didn't raise your hand, I pray before you leave tonight, God will give you a need. <laughs> Not necessarily a bad need, okay? That's right. That's right. So I'm going to give you one more chance. Anybody here has a prayer request? <laughs> oh, Boy, a lot more of you. Yes. <laughs> God just gave you that need instantly. Father, we thank you. Yes, thank Lord. you that thank you're you, all Father. powerful, all knowing, mm. all capable. Yes. Lord. And you desire to bless your children. Your word says in Psalm 35 that you take pleasure in the prosperity of your children. Thank you. You also said you have not because you've asked not. So we come before you right now asking, seeking, and knocking and believing in faith that our prayers are not, going to, are not going in vain. So with that confidence, God, we lift our nation up to you. Yes, Come on, stretch Lord. your hands out towards yes, the Lord. flag of our nation. America needs Jesus. America needs Jesus. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would move in our nation's capital. That you would pray for the Republicans. Pray, we pray for the Democrats. We pray for undecided. We pray, God, whatever that needs to come to surface, whatever is in the dark, no matter who has done it, that you would use this season to bring it to surface, God. That righteousness would return to our nature. Yes, Lord. You said righteousness exalts a nation. So, Father, we pray you will bring right righteousness back into our nation, God. And give us godly leaders, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around our nation, around all the cities yes, in our nation, God. That no matter what happens, who is the winner, who is the loser, that you will restrain the people. Restrain them, God, that there will be peace. We pray Psalm 91 over our nation, over our president, the family, over everybody that makes laws over us, God. Psalm 91 over Washington, over United States, Lord. And we pray for the borders of our nation, air, land, and sea, that you would cover our borders, God, and expose the plans of the enemy from the outside or on the inside. Yes, Lord. Oh, we thank you for America, God. Mm, thank you, Father. We bless America tonight, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray for all the military, the veterans. Come on, give some volume to your prayers. A couple weeks ago, you got, got the volume. Let, don't let the volume go down. Don't let the intensity go down. We pray for all of our military, the veterans, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. And if you know someone in any one of those branches, call them out by name. Susan, Travis, Stephen, Andy, James, Ferdy. Protect all of our sons and daughters that are serving us, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. That we are enjoying our freedoms because of them. Bless them and protect them. We pray for all, all the first responders, the police, the firemen, servicemen, emergency workers, all the people that are out there serving us. Protect them and bless them. We just thank you for them, Lord. We pray for our own state of Arizona, our city of Phoenix, Lord. Father, we pray that you would expose whatever needs to be exposed yes, in Phoenix, in Arizona, that whatever needs to come to, to the surface, that to the light that you bring it. We pray for our, our mayor. We pray for our governor, God, that you would give them wisdom from on high. Yes, Protect the borders of our state, mm -hmm. air, and land, yes, and expose the plans of enemy. May righteousness, may righteousness exalt Arizona in the name of Jesus. We pray for our neighbors to the North Canada, our neighbors to the South, Mexico. We pray for our common border that you protected. For all the Middle Eastern nations, Turkey, Syria, Kurdistan, Iran, all those nations around there. There's a lot of turmoil going on, but God, we know that you are at work because there's revival breaking out also. In the name of Jesus. Well, we pray for Dr. Raman. Thank you for freeing him. Bring him home to us soon, God. We pray for South America, Latin America, European nations, African nations, North, South, East, West, China, Japan, North and South Korea, Hong Kong, Russia, Ukraine, Australia, New Zealand, all the missionaries around the world, God, and the persecuted churches. Father, we pray that you will bless our missionaries as they're out there serving you. Yes, you will give Lord. them yes, fruit Lord. for their labor, Protect souls, them, souls and more souls. Oh, we pray for all of our local churches here in our city. Bless every one of them, Lord. Yes. Meet every need that they have. Let there be unity yes. among our churches here yes, in our city, Father. God. Yes, Lord. That together we unite and bring revival mm. to our cities mm. and yes, our state. Yes, we pray for our own Dream City Church and their, their different campuses, God that you would bless them, protect them, meet every need. Thank you for touching Pastor Luke. Thank you for, Lord, healing him so fast. We give you glory. Be with him, an angel. Be with Pastor Tommy and Maria Barnett. Meet every need that they have, all of our campuses, God. Thank you for what you did last Sunday that we're going to hear this Sunday, the miracle offering, God. Let it be above and beyond anything we could ask or dream. And we pray for all the different ministries of this church. The youth, the Dream City College, the staff, mm -hmm. Church on the Street, Streetlight, Thrive, yes. Reclaim, Mom's Pantry, where hope lives. Mm -hmm. All the different ministries, Hallelujah. God. Yes. And I just pray right now for every person in this room that has yes. a need, God, Jesus. as they signify to you by raising their hand, that you would see that raised hand. You know what it is, God. You know what the need is. I pray this would be the season, God that you would be abundantly, exceedingly above on what they could ask or think. Not just enough, but overflow in every area. Overflow in their health, overflow in their finances, overflow in everything that God they have put their hands to. This truly would be a season of blessing, God. And we just thank you in advance. Thank you for what you're going to do next week in this place. Yes, Father. We just give you glory in advance, God. Let there be souls that will come to know you next yes, week. Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you praise oh, for all that you're about to do between now and the end of the year. Oh, there's still a lot of time, God. And we thank you for the suddenlies that are coming our way, Lord. Yes, Father. Finally, Lord, we pray for your beloved Israel. Yes. Oh, you said, I bless those who bless Israel. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Yes. We thank you for Israel. We thank you for your eye that's upon Israel. You never sleep or slumber. We pray for the borders of Israel, air, land, and sea, that you would protect it, expose the enemy that wants to destroy that tiny nation, the apple of your eye, Lord. And we will continue to pray for Israel until the day that you return for us, God. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we thank you for America that's standing with Israel, Lord. We know the blessings of Israel overflow to our nation when we stand with Israel. Let us never go back on that 
standing with Israel, God. Thank you for all the intercessors that are interceding for Israel, for America, for what's happening in our nation, God. Because we know it's the cry of the intercessors that you are hearing, that you're answering. And suddenly, Lord, our help is coming from on high. Thank you, Lord. And suddenly, Thank you, Lord. suddenly the deliverance is coming, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you. Can I share something? We thank you. You know, Pastor Luke, it's an incredible thing. It's a miracle what the Lord has done in his body and in him. But I also feel at the same time, it was a miracle for Anna Lee to finish mm. Mm, yeah. this run or this walk, I should say. And the shield of protection that was over her at this point. The Lord absolutely shielded yes. and protected Pastor Luke. I mean, I don't know if you saw on CNN when they had interviewed him. It, it, every time I see these pictures, I just weep because of what the Lord has done. The other thing I wanted to say is, you know, you were talking about, especially this t season and time, Saeed, and how we come together as a family. Thanksgiving coming up, right? I have a word of advice, something I learned many years ago. The hard way. The hard way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure many of you have too. But this is something not just for your Thanksgiving dinner time. It's for a lifetime. It's, you need to control your environment. That's the best way. I was sharing that with, um, a family member that every time she gets together with this one family member, I mean, sparks fly. And it's really not good. And I listened to what she was saying, and I told her, I said, you need to control that environment. Because the very minute you hear something that you know sparks are going to fly, Get up and walk to another room. Yep. Get up and walk away. Because that's the best thing you can do. It will hold your tongue. Right? And as you're walking away, you can be praying in the Spirit. For the Lord to turn your heart to love. Just a bit of advice. Amen. <laughs> Well, we can all say, attest to that, that we've had situations like that, but um, hopefully we learn. <clears throat> we have to have faith that this year is going to be better than before. Yes, absolutely. Romans yeah. 10, 17 says, faith That's comes good. by hearing and the word of God, hearing the word of God. But hearing the word itself is not enough. You have to... Speak it. The word needs a voice. And remember last week I talked about what happened on the day of Pentecost. They heard, they saw, they spoke, and they went out and did. Yes. Okay? And 3,000 were added to the church instantly. But what if they just heard and they saw and they just said, oh, that's great, that's beautiful. Oof, goosebumps. No. They heard, they saw, but they spoke by faith. And they went out there and did it. This is the time where we need to put some feet, some action to our faith. Because faith without works is dead. And what we value most throughout the year determines our choices. Whatever you value about time, you will spend time on that, which you value. If it's your health, you spend time on it. 
If it's your finances, you spend time on it. If it's your marriage, you spend time on it. Okay? It's work. It just doesn't come. So what you value most determines your choices. And one thought during a prayer meeting, okay, or any time, especially during a prayer meeting, because you're open to hear from the Holy Spirit. One revelation, one epiphany has the power to change everything. And it comes with one choice, one decision. We choose what we chase after. There are some people that Doesn't are in the gym work. six hours a day. They chase after a perfect body. There are some people that chase after money. They're on the computer trading, bond, whatever, all day long. There are some people that chase after God. I decided years ago, I went from a world chaser to a God chaser. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I'm a God chaser. <laughs> and as I chase him, everything, all the other stuff comes and chases me. <laughs> the stuff I used to chase is chasing me now. Why? Because my focus changed. Now, I want to make a statement over here that we hear a lot that people have said, no matter what happens, you remember all the stuff's happening in the world right now, you start talking, about, hey, no matter what happens, remember, God is in control. Amen. Have you heard that? Yes. Well, I don't mess with your theology a little bit here. <laughs> okay? Because they base that on Romans 28. It says, all things work together. That word, together, remember that, mm -hmm. for good. When we say, oh, God's in control, it sounds very religious. Oh, I'm so pious. Oh, God's in charge. But I'm here to tell you that there are three participants in what happens here, mm. on, you know, right here on the earth. There are three participants on any event that takes place here on earth. First, God and his angels. Okay? Second one, the devil and his demons. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is mankind, you and I. All three have the right and dominion to act on earth. And all three are actively seeking to bring their agenda, their plan to pass. Wow. All three. God wants to, his plan to go forth. The devil wants his plan to go forth. And mankind wants to push his, his agenda. Life or death. God wants life. The devil wants death. The problem is, sometimes we agree with God, sometimes we agree with the devil. Wow. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life. Death and life are in the power of tongue. And a lot of people say life and death. No, no, but you read for yourself. It says death and life. It says death first. Why? Because we're quick to speak death first. But in another place, Deuteronomy 13, 19, it says life and death. This is when God's speaking. Life and death. I put before you. Then it says, I would that you would choose life. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's, God's, that's what God's choice is for us. And when we agree with the devil's plan, it brings pain, it brings havoc, it brings sin, and it brings death. But when we agree with God's plan, it brings happiness, joy, peace, wisdom, truth, and life. At times we agree with the devil, at times with God. Who are you agreeing with yeah. in your daily choices? Who are you agreeing with in your daily choices? Now that verse that says, all things work together for good. Also says, for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Mm -hmm. But then he says, all things work together for good. Together. Remember, I said, we have to team up. We, got, we, are, we are a team member. We either are part of God's team or the devil's team. Mm -hmm. Because we're agreeing with somebody. <laughs> so true. In our actions. 
And unfortunately, based on our feelings, up or down, one day we believe in what, the, what we've seen on TV, what the devil is saying, and the next time, our, our faith, we, we read the word of God, or somehow our faith rises and we start believing with God. We team up with God only to come back and team with the devil. And unfortunately, sometimes we think we are the sole person on the team and we like to push our own agenda. Go forward without consulting God, without the fear of the enemy of that he wants to kill you. Wow. That's when it's really dangerous. That's good. We have to agree with somebody. That's what the power of agreement, Matthew 18, 19, talks about. When two shall agree on anything here on earth, touching, mm -hmm. it will be done for them. But that word agree in the original text is the word symphoneo, which means symphony. Will you play that uh, really nicely, something very nice that you're playing? See, it's harmony. It's soothing. But I want you to bang those keys right now, out of whack. Cool. That is not a symphony. That is out of, out of harmony. Yeah. That's what happens when we pray without agree agreement. When we pray in different things, we're not agreeing in unity. Listen, there needs to be unity in prayer. Yes. Okay? It needs to be unity in prayer. Who are you choosing to team up with? Hmm? See, and it's a lot easier for us to blame God or the devil for the stupid decisions that we have made ourselves. Amen. The devil made me do it. No, he didn't. He enticed you, and you did it. Okay? Yeah, well, I've done it. Probably did it today. Okay? But then we repent, and then we move on. Or we all be quick to blame somebody else for our mistakes. Let us just agree with what the Word of God says, that I want to bless you, I want to favor you. This is a season of grace. This is a season. Ask, seek, and knock. That's why it's important for us to pray in unity. When we pray over here, we pray over different things. We all need to pray in agreement with the subject that's being prayed for. There's power in that. Father, we worship you. We worship you, God, with our prayers. We worship you with our mouth. We worship you with our lips. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that comes and changes us from inside out. Just sitting in your presence and worshiping you, Lord, changes us. Oh, we give you glory. He lives. I can face tomorrow. Yes. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know.
face anything. Thank you. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under the wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will pour, will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Yes. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. They will lift you up with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he lives, our fear is gone, and because I know. just reminded me of an incident many years ago. I was like maybe 30, 35 years ago. Um, she was she had she was gone to her parents' house. No. Or you were asleep. You were not home. Rena and I had gone to something for church overnight. Right. It was she wasn't night. home and I woke up in the middle of the night by this no, fire engine noise and everything and and uh, I looked, there was a lot of brightness. Us. I looked at the house next to us, and these, we had big lots, so there was a lot of space between our house and the next one. And the house next to us was engulfed in fire. And the wind was, the wind was blowing. It was blowing stuff everywhere. And uh, I thought, wow, this is a little, yeah, the distance, but it's a little too close for comfort. When my office was the window, I was looking at it straight ahead. And I sat there. And I recited that scripture. The Holy Spirit brought it to my remembrance. 10,000 may fall on your left hand, 10,000 on your right hand, but no harm would come near your dwelling. And I kept saying it, I kept saying it, and it looked like the, the embers off of the house would fly up, and right before they touched my house, they would die. <laughs> It, it was amazing. I sat there for two or three hours because it was in the middle of the night. The fire department even came and said to get out of the yeah. house. Yeah. I said, well, there's nobody here except me, so nobody's going to miss me anyway, so I'll, I'll stay. Oh. <laughs> anyway, it was, she just reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And no Beautiful. harm came no near our dwellings. No harm came near our dwellings. That's right. It was as though as I was saying it, the embers would fly away and die. It was amazing. Thank you, Lord. Yes. How many times are we protected? Not even aware of it. I was going to say, not even aware of what the Lord has done. But even more so to recognize yes. what a blessing when he protects us. 
See, that's when faith comes more and more, when you do recognize it and you thank God for it. Next time, the fear comes. Mm. When faith enters the room, fear has to leave. That's right. Yes. Our so faith when, arises. When fear comes yeah. in and you, you just pull up your faith, all of a sudden the fear is gone. Amen. Because they can't so both true. be present at the same time. That's right. They are, but you push one down and lift up the other one. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you, do you that for more the often. protection. Read scriptures in the middle of your, of your worship. This uh, last Sunday, I saw Marissa Hamilton at the altar. She came out for prayer. And she shared something with me. Would you come share with us? She was the candidate running for Phoenix mayor that we prayed for here, anointed, a couple Hi, months back. Would you share what you said Sunday with our audience here? About what we have in Phoenix? Yes. So we face a crisis here in Phoenix. Um, we've been facing a crisis, but it has escalated. And so we need to pray over our city and lift up our city. But everything that we need to do to save our city, we don't need to rely on the government for. Amen. We are Amen. able to come together and unite as people of faith, unite our churches to be able to work together to lift those up that are in pain and suffering. We've had a 44% increase in homicides. We've had a 180% increase in domestic violence deaths. We've had a major increase in homelessness, in substance abuse, in mental health issues, and suicide. But it doesn't have to be this way. And if we wait upon our government leaders to do anything, they will play politics. Whereas we as people of faith can stand in the gap. We can bring those solutions to our community. And we must, because there are so many people that need to hear a kind word from us, that need to have sustenance, that you just need a little bit, a little bit to help them push up and to be able to live their greatest good the purpose that God has put into their heart. And so we can play a role in, in helping our community and solving those problems and healing our community. We don't have to allow the things that are happening around us that in some ways feels that we can't control it to determine the, the word dominion that you use, determine the dominion that falls to our city. Yes. We decide by us, each and every one of us, when we see that person in need, when we work together to bring those, to bring our organizations together, our churches together, we have the solutions there in front of us. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of taking that word from God and seeing the direction that he gives for us to work together and help those that need help right now. Amen. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Marissa. Thank you. Saeed, can we pray right now for that? Yes. This is a season where we can practice what she said mm -hmm. about helping others in need, families in need, whether it's giving them food, whatever it is. This is the season yeah. that we can truly start practicing that. Now, can we start right now, stop and pray for that yes. specifically? Yes. I want you to pray. Okay. Father, we just lift you up right now. Lord, we heard the word that Marissa spoke. Yes. And Father, we, we call forth exactly what you would have us to do. That, Lord, the Holy Spirit will lay on our hearts individually. That our eyes will be open to those who were right in front of us, Father. Thank you, Lord. That, Lord, that you will give new vision to the things that, that need to be done to help our community. Yes, Lord. Father, there, we are needy people yes. ourselves. And Father, we call upon your wisdom, your guidance, yes. your direction, Holy Spirit, yes. that you will show us how we can better ourselves, we can better our community, and that we will show the love of Christ like we've never shown before. Yes. O 
open our hearts, Father, to the things of you in a much greater way, we pray. Thank you. So that you may be glorified, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Father, give every person divine appointments. Yes. Yes. Every day, wherever they go. You put Thank someone you, in their path. Yes, Father. That there would be no question in yes. their minds that you have placed someone in their path mm -hmm. because you want them to be a miracle in their so life. Good. Lord, yes. we pray for miracles all the time. Yes. But let us realize a lot of times we are the miracle yes, that we Lord. have prayed for. Yes. So I pray you would give miracles to every single person here as they open their eyes and their spirit mm -hmm. to hear from you, to see the opportunities that you have. For Thank each and every one of us. Thanks. And as we have heard over and over again, the miracle is in the house. Yes. And you are it. Thank you. And we thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank Be open you, to it. You know, as I was sitting there, I looked and I saw a, one of my favorite couples walk in here. It's been many years since I've seen them. Mm -hmm. This couple were We're actually, were, uh, it's their fault. Uh, we, we are in Phoenix. I want you to know that. It's their fault. You probably heard the story. That uh, most of you have not heard the, it, the story. When we were praying, God, we knew God was moving us. So we had sold our businesses and everything. We didn't know where. We didn't know when. Well, one Sunday, they, they, they were our best friends at the time. We did everything together. In Chicago? In Chicago. Yes. So one Sunday, we found out that Jim got a job transfer and he was moving Tuesday, guess where? Phoenix. <laughs> so that Christmas we came, and when I had prayed, I said, Lord, if Phoenix is where you're leading us, confirm it through my wife. Either love it or hate it. No questions asked. I didn't even tell her. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, right off the bat, she loved everything about it. You know, so we came to visit them, and somebody had told us, when you go to Phoenix, you better go check out Tommy Barnett's church. We walked into that building, the third floor. The Spirit of God hit us, cried, 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 cried. We came back that night again. The Spirit of God hit us, cried, cried, cried. Yeah. We said, Lord, if this is the place where you're leading us, confirm it. We went back, and all the things we need to do, boom, boom, just like that, they started happening, and we moved to Phoenix. So Jim and Barbara, we love you. We yes. thank God for you. And they, they drove in tonight. They drove in straight over here. They're going to spend a few days with us. and uh, From Washington. Three weeks. Oh, he didn't say that to me. Pray for us, please. <laughs> Pray for us. You may lose your pastor here after three weeks. I don't know. No, we love you. Yes. We can't wait to. Yeah, we can't uh, wait to fellowship with you. To, to know you a little better. It's been a few yeah. years, so yeah. thank God. Yeah. Thank God for how he uses every person in our lives. Now, the thing of it is, they moved here, okay? We were here for a few years. They moved to Washington. <laughs> but see, God used them to That's bring okay. us here. We're calling you back. See? <laughs> God used them to bring us here. So yes. each one of us, our lives are connected with each other. Amen. You know, we are miracles in different people's lives. Yes. And there may be someone in your life you haven't even met yet that you're gonna be a miracle in their life. Mm. Divine appointments around every corner. Amen. Now, you told me you have a, you, you just exploding with, to, to give this testimony. And she didn't tell me what it was, but she said it's so good, I can't even tell you. So make it a good one. What is your testimony? <laughs> tell us your name. All right, so, hi, I'm Jamika. Jamika. And, um, I have a full-time job, and I come here, and I serve, and uh, God has been good. And there's sometimes I'm not able to make it because of work. It annoys me, if I'm honest, because my heart wants to be here uh, wow. with you all and, and, and serve and, and do what I'm supposed to do for God. And so last week, I had a kind of situation that happened at work with one of, with one of my um, employees, and um, it was so heartbreaking that I didn't know what to do. Um, there was a SWAT team that came to her home, pulled her out of her house with her children, 
young children, probably two years old, five years old. Um, they're in bathrobes. This is first thing in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning. They're all laying out on the yard, handcuffs her husband, you know, really the no knock warrant. So, you know, there's no warning there and everybody just kind of frantically pulled out of the, the home. Um, you know, I get a call. This probably happened at nine in the morning. I got a call maybe around 12. She's in hysterics. She doesn't know what to do. Everything has been seized from computers, cell phones, and actually she connected with me via LinkedIn. I never even checked my personal really at work, you know, because I'm so focused. I just happened to pick up my, my phone, see a LinkedIn message, and I'm like, well, that's weird. Doesn't really make any sense, but okay. I read the message, call this number right away. Call the number, it's a friend's phone number, but she was trying to contact me to let me know what was going on. You know, all I could do at that point is pray for her. Um, I, I, I don't think that she believes, to be honest with you. And so um, I just took that, I tried to be as supportive as I can, uh, pray for her in that situation, and just kind of continue to pray. I sent um, my aunt a text that Tuesday and just said, look, something came up at work. I'm not going to be able to make it. Can you let Pastor Saeed know to pray for this person? Um, and, and, and she said she would, and you know, and she would pray. And so I know you guys prayed because I kid you not, I got a call from Holly yesterday. I don't think I was supposed to say her name. But <laughs> I got a call from her yesterday, and she told me, something that just floored my mind that I almost had to like run around my house and give God praise for because all those charges had been dropped. Hmm. It was an accident. You know, it got caught up in the system, wrong address, whatever. Oh. Oh. Those charges just disappeared. Jeez. Husband's back home, holding those wow. babies, kissing his wife, her family's together. And she said one very important thing to me. And she said, you know, I'm not so, I wasn't so much a believer, but I think I believe more now. Wow. Woo Praise God. Thank you. And so Thank what you. it did for me is it let me know that I'm right where I need to be. Amen. It's not so much about the work. It's about the people. Yes. And how we can pray for the people who don't know God who don't know him, who haven't experienced his, his love, share that love, share that kindness, pray for them when they're hurting, when they're struggling, when they don't know what to do because maybe they haven't been brought up in church or whatever that relationship looks like. So, you know, even on our jobs and like when they were talking about connecting with people, we're there to be a light, a light that shines in darkness. Amen. Amen. So that's the testimony. Thank Amen. you. Wow, Thank that you, was Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that answer. You know, every miracle has two parts. God's part, then our part. And every miracle that happens, we see, has two types of blessing. The blessing that blesses the person, and it blesses us. A lot of times we get more blessing, and the person says, oh, you blessed me so much, and we go, no, no, I was the one really blessed, because, yes. like you see, her, our faith rises mm -hmm. to say, I am involved in your plans, God. I agreed with you. Mm -hmm on what you wanted to do, okay? And I was on your team. Thank you, God, for yes. allowing me to be on your team. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Most of the times, a prayer does more for us. When we come here to pray, really, it doesn't do anything for God. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. that. Even the worship doesn't do anything for God because he's got angels up there, perfect sound. Mm. But when we do it with all of our heart, it changes us, and we start recognizing how great he is, like those songs we just sang. You know, how great is our God. We start to realize, actually start believing. Amen? I want to wait upon you now for offering before we start praying for different needs. Don't forget next week to come. This place is going to be packed. All the doors are going to be open. Everybody from the church is going to come here next Tuesday for, for our Thanksgiving uh, service. And it's going to be a very thing, special too. service. Mm -hmm. huh? I was, it's going to be a very thing. special service. Yeah. So come. It's not going to be a normal service. Yeah. You wouldn't want to miss. Come early because there's not going to be any seats here. Okay? So, Father, bless all those who give in this offering. I pray that you would take it and multiply it into their lives. 
multiply the seed that they're putting in the ground, this fertile soil. Multiply it back to them as well as to the ministry so it will go far and wide for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead. How great is our God, see me how great is our God, oh see how great, how great is our God, how great is our God, see me how great is our God, oh see how great God. It hasn't even entered into our hearts or minds when we sing that song, how truly great he is. I want to finish with this, leave you with this scripture in Zechariah 4. Verse 6, he said, this is a word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Jesus. Then he says, he looked at the mountain. We all have mountains. See, mountain here represents a difficulty, an impossible thing. So as he looked at the mountain and said, who are you, that great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace grace to it. Mm, what this tells me is that anytime we have a mountain that raises his head, Jesus. all we have to do, shout grace, grace to that mountain. Grace, unmerited favor. And it's not anything we're doing, it's not by our power <laughs> or by our strength, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. We believe that. Anybody here facing a mountain right now? We're going to practice this right now. On the count of three, I want everybody, and, and when you say it, think in your mind what your mountain is. Okay? Picture the mountain in your mind. On the count of three, we all going to say together, grace, grace. Are you ready? Yes. One. Two, three. Grace, grace, grace. You have the faith yes. to believe that God heard you. And you're using his power, his authority, and you just teamed up with him, believing his word. Amen. And you're just a player in that team, but the captain of the team. You're carrying all the weight. 
Thank you, Lord. I believe that there's someone here right now that the mountain that they're facing is their child. They have prayed for that child for years. They have prayed and prayed. And they've gone through lots of different emotions throughout the years. But I believe God tonight wants to shout in your ear, grace, grace, that he has heard that. And this is the year that you're going to see the prodigal come home. If that's you, stand to your feet. See one over there? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. So many, so many. Father, you see every person every father, grandfather, every mother, grandmother, whether it's their son, their daughter, their grandchildren, as right now in their mind's eye, they're seeing that child coming home, coming home. Yes, that they call out the name right now to you. Thank you, Lord. For bringing prodigals home. Thank you, Lord, for your hedge of protection that has been around them all these years, God. Yes, and all these years you, that they never went so far that your grace could not reach them. Amen. They never be, went beyond your reach, God. And we thank you for that. Thank you that your eye has always been on them, Lord. In the times we couldn't see what they were doing, where they were going. You were watching over them, though. We thank you for that. And we thank you, God, for the assurance that's coming to us right now yes. that our son is coming home. Our daughter is coming home. Thank you, Lord. Safe and sound. We thank you for that, God. We thank you, Lord. Give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank we give you, you honor. Yes. Thank you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Glory. Glory to your thank name. You. Glorify yourself through our seed, mm. through our children. Thank you, Lord. And their children. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you know that song? Blessing? No, I don't have it. Which one? Which one? Oh, it's a good one. Blessing our children and our children's children. Mm. This is the season. Yes. Generational blessing yes. over us, Lord. Generational blessing. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. Thank you. Lord, bless you and keep you. Thank you, Lord. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh, thank you, Lord. Receive us, peace.
I said earlier this is the season where we need the power of the Holy Spirit like never before not by might not by power but by my spirit said the Lord right now I believe God wants to fill some of you with this Holy Spirit I may have been seeking for a long time and that's the problem. You've been seeking. <laughs> Quit seeking. Receive. Because it's just a gift that God wants to give to you. All you got to do is receive. Why do you have to seek a gift? When somebody wants to give you the gift. I explained it last week. God's standing there waiting. I want to give it to you. Just receive. Quit resisting. Quit trying to figure it out. This is a season of miracles. A lot of miracles you're going to miss because you're going to look in the natural. You're going to miss what God is doing in the Spirit. So if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, stand, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. the gift that God wants to give to you, the greatest gift after salvation is His Holy Spirit. All you have to do is believe and receive. Open your mouth. The Bible says, Psalms 81.10, and I will fill it for you. I will fill your mouth. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That's the Holy Spirit He was talking about. When you receive Christ as your Savior, you receive the portion of his spirit in you. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the fullness of it comes out and it bubbles out of your mouth. That's when you'll never be the same after that. Some of you have been holding this spirit inside you and he's been wanting to come out to overflow and you have pushed it down, back down, back down. Bible says we have this treasure in this earthen vessel that the glory may be of God, not of ours. When you receive Christ, he deposited a treasure inside you. You've been walking around pregnant with this treasure. When you receive the Holy Spirit, it enables you to tap into that treasure. What good is a treasure if you don't use it or you don't even know you have it? So you have the treasure inside you, the Holy Spirit portion of it. Open your mouth right now. Start speaking. Nothing to figure out. Just start speaking. There you go. Right? Just, just that, that easy. Just like that. Start speaking. Oh, you got to speak it out loud in a language you don't understand because if it's English or language you understand, your mind is active. Your mind and your spirit cannot be active at the same time. Oh, turn your mind off. Turn your spirit over to God. Start speaking. Come on, let me hear you. Those of you around them that are already filled, speak up. Speak it up. There you go. I see it. I see it right there, right there, right there. Some of you that have masks, I cannot see. Those people at home, right now, the same Holy Spirit that's here right now is right there at your homes. Open your mouth and receive. Open your spirit. And say, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to speak. And allow the Holy Spirit to accomplish through me what he wants to do. He's going to enable me tonight to be able to do things that I've never done before. We are having a modern day Pentecost right here, God. And we thank you that the Holy Spirit was introduced to us 
first century. That it didn't stop. It started then. What started then is still working. It's still going. And it will go until you return. And we thank you for giving us this, your spirit to be able to go through life, to be able to control our emotions, to be able to have wisdom, to make it through the season of uncertainty, God. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, Rebo Shikara Bosopo. Those of you that have received for sure, come come talk to me, encourage me that you did. I don't want to assume anything. And those of you that didn't, keep trying. Don't stop. Okay, keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking. Practice. Amen? And those of you that did receive, don't stop. Keep practicing because it's not a one-time experience. You have to continue to practice, continue to speak in the spirit. Amen? Well, God bless you, Brother Rodney. Happy birthday to you. It's Rodney's birthday tonight. Happy birthday, Rodney. Happy birthday to you. We love you. And your miracle is on the way. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. We thank each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you peace. Yes. And may he give you divine appointments around every corner. Yes. May his Holy Spirit reveal to you the great plans that he has for your life. Amen. During this season, receive his blessings like never before. And if you agree with that, say a big... Amen. Amen. God bless you all. You're watching us online. Yes. Thank you. Don't forget next week, come early if you want good seats and bring someone with you. Amen. 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 Bless you. Good night, everyone.